G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for my early crack at um, a final ladder prediction that I'm doing in the middle of the season. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm recording this on May 25th because I'm currently on a trip uh, through the middle of Europe at the moment. So doing my mid-season ladder prediction a little bit early and scheduling this to release a little bit later to balance out all the content. But long story short, today I'm gonna have a crack at predicting the final ladder as well as the final grand final matchup, the eventual premier, and then all the individual awards too. So I have a uh, historically poor record of predicting um, ladders at the end of the year, uh, let alone at the start of the season or a mid-season uh, ladder prediction, but it's all part of the fun. And we're gonna have a crack based on what we know so far. There's been a few surprises this year in terms of the performances of some teams. Now that we have a little bit more data, we're gonna have a crack at predicting the order of the 18 teams, um, regardless of how wrong I'm likely to get it. I'm still gonna have a crack. You may have noticed I'm wearing uh, this very, very bright West Coast Eagles uh, t-shirt, which a lovely colleague of mine got me at Bunnings. Wendy, if you're watching this, miss you. What better time to be wearing something like this on camera um, than when the Eagles are the laughing stock of the competition. Uh, before we get into the ladder prediction, guys, I am gonna shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, for all your male grooming needs, whether it be the trimmer to shave your, you know, your chest and your balls. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 is a great product for that. It's ceramic bladed to reduce uh, grooming accidents. It's waterproof, so you can use it in the shower, which in my opinion is the only way to use a chest hair uh, trimmer. You don't wanna do that on the bathroom floor. And all the other kind of liquid formulations that you could possibly want, uh, uh, you can get them at manscaped.com. And the cool thing is, by being a viewer of True Footy, you can use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout and you will get free shipping and 20% off and and 20% off on any order that you make. So make sure you make the most of this bargain. Cool, so we're gonna uh, rip through this pretty snappy. Um, what I'm gonna do is go from the bottom to the top of the ladder before giving my final awards, uh, and I'm gonna break it up into clumps of teams. So starting off, we'll go with the bottom four, and this is a very uh, basic prediction because it's very similar to what it looks like right now. But I've got the bottom four comprising of the West Coast Eagles winning the Wooden Spoon, North Melbourne just above them, Hawthorne in third last, and then GWS rounding out my bottom four. And I feel a little bit harsh on GWS here because I think they're clearly the best of those bottom four teams. But at the same time, Hawthorne as well has shown some really improved form. North Melbourne's best form this year has been pretty good, but in recent times, it feels like it's been so long since I've seen that form that it's hard for me to tip them to finish any higher than second last at the moment. And on current form, I think Hawthorne is the better team right now. We're kind of splitting hairs like throughout the rest of the season. Um, North Melbourne could regain some form potentially when LDU comes back. Obviously, Clarkson's not their coach at the moment, so they're in a little bit of disarray, but no one will be as bad as West Coast. I do think West Coast will win at least one more game this year, but it's hard to predict which game that will be. I'm betting it will be a random one. They've also got a relatively tough fixture uh, when you compare it to the other bottom four sides. So that's a pretty straightforward bottom four for me. Next, we've got a clump of teams uh, that are kind of like the also-rans for finals from 10th to 14th. I've got Adelaide in 10th, and I feel terrible having them sat in finals, but uh, I'll explain why soon. Uh, we've got Carlton, then Sydney, then Gold Coast, then Richmond. Now, out of that clump of five teams, Adelaide certainly can play finals, but that's just the way my ladder prediction uh, went ahead. I actually did this on Squiggle. My logic being that they're just a young, exciting side, and I think they're going to have enough bad days to ensure they don't quite make the finals, and I just slightly have a couple of teams racing ahead of them because of some improved form I've seen recently. Carlton, Sydney, Gold Coast, Richmond, none of these teams, in my opinion, are a serious contender for finals as it currently stands. Again, I don't know what's happened the last week. Maybe Carlton knocked off Sydney by 100 points. I don't know, but I doubt it. And Carlton finishing above Sydney probably is dependent on how that game goes in uh, round 11. Sydney are a little too injury depleted to really rise up my rankings. Uh, Gold Coast, again, I want to put them higher, but I think their range is probably 11th at best, to be honest. And maybe Maybe the order of those teams could shuffle around a little bit, but I think from what we've seen from Carlton and Sydney, I have a little bit more faith. Actually, faith is the wrong word. I definitely don't have that much faith at the moment, but we know that they pack a punch deep down and they've probably shown that on their day, they're a little bit better than the Suns. And Richmond are kind of in that no man's land. Again, they're getting a new coach, um, a Qualter for the time being. I don't know if that will change um, going forward, but a little bit of no man's land for Richmond. They're gonna find it tough to move up the ladder and they take 14. Then I'm gonna give you my teams uh, from fifth to ninth. Um, I'll start from uh, ninth. So the team that is unlucky to miss out on finals will be Fremantle. And 
At the moment, that might seem bizarre to have Fremantle above Adelaide. I totally get that. I think Adelaide's best form has been better. But I think I did this on the Squiggle Predictor, and I think the strength of the actual fixture weighs into it for me as well. Adelaide could finish 9th and Fremantle 10th for sure. But Fremantle, I feel like, have started to come together a little bit in terms of the way that they're scoring in particular, which has been a question mark in recent times. I got this vibe about Fremantle now that they're, they're going to improve. And I think with an easy run in the back end of the season, they'll get close to finals, but ultimately miss out. Essendon do make finals for me. Again, I feel a little bit uncomfortable backing them in because in recent, well, in the last decade, really, it feels like Essendon can get themselves into a good position and fall away. But just looking at it on exposed form, they're, they're clearly a top eight side on quality, in my opinion, from what I've seen. The Dogs, St Kilda and Geelong um, are the best three teams outside the top four, in my opinion. The Dogs, throughout my ladder predictor, were sneaking in and sneaking out and sneaking in and sneaking out. And I think they're closer to top four quality than they are, um, you know, that seventh or eighth quality. St Kilda, um, you know, on their day can be very, very good. I don't necessarily have the same faith in them to ram out an entire season like I do with the Bulldogs. And Geelong are just kind of, I think they've lost too many games at the moment to really sneak back into the top four, but we know how good they can be. And therefore I have them making finals, but kind of in no man's land from their perspective in seventh spot. Then we'll go with the top four. Uh, I've gone with a pretty basic top four. And this is my, in my opinion right now is the best four teams in the comp. We've got Collingwood taking out the minor premiership and Melbourne, Brisbane, and Port Adelaide just behind them. I think Collingwood and Melbourne are the best two teams in the competition, but it's a very, very small gap to Brisbane. In fact, now that I think about it, I think Brisbane is probably on their level in terms of talent, but again, call it a fixturing quirk. Uh, I don't, not too sure how that ended up, but I have Melbourne slightly ahead of the Brisbane Lions. And Port Adelaide are legitimately the fourth best side in the comp. The Bulldogs are close. They're not far behind Port, but Port Adelaide's form in recent weeks, you know, knocking off Melbourne in particular. They've beaten Brisbane this year heavily. They got shellacked by Collingwood, but at the same time, I think we're seeing this return to that 2020 to 2021 form from Port Adelaide, and I think it'll be good enough to see them make the top four. Great, so now let's move into some individual awards. The Brownlow medal is a tough one. Uh, it's a bit of a stab in the dark, but I think I'm actually gonna go with Collingwood's Nick Dacos because he's been so consistent and he's a standout player. Wins the ball on the outside, he uses it very, very well. Hits the scoreboard uh, just often enough to stay relevant and in a side like Collingwood who's going to win most of their games this year you can see Dacos picking up a lot of threes twos and ones throughout the year so it's a tough one I also really considered Marcus Bontempelli um, and even Zach Butters depending on how the second half of the year goes for him but Nick Dacos is the one you can safely bet on the Coleman I'm going to back in Charlie Kerno to continue his fantastic form going back to back not a huge call um, just a fantastic player it's him or Jeremy Cameron you'd have to say um, and you know Kerno doesn't have the same competition that Cameron does we've seen in recent weeks Hawkins has bobbed up and taken a few goals from Cameron and has dipped in form a little bit. Whereas Kerno, I just think he's currently leading it. He's more likely to win than not. The Rising Star is uh, pretty much locked and loaded for Harry Sheasel, I would say. However, this is very dependent on injury. So if Sheasel goes down in the next few weeks, touch wood, hope that doesn't happen, then you'd think Ashcroft is the likely uh, next contender. So Sheasel probably has to get through at least 18 games, I would say. Um, that's probably the threshold. If Ashcroft plays an entire season, Ashcroft's arguably playing a more difficult role, but I would still say that Sheasel has demonstrated the most um, raw talent this year and should be the Rising Star winner. A little quirk as to my prediction as well, even though we won't know the answer to this until October, but which team does Harley rejoin? Now I have the Eagles winning the wooden spoon and uh, obviously there's much being talked about how the Eagles may trade that pick and that's probably a decision I would probably support to be honest as a fan. So my prediction is the West Coast Eagles will win the wooden spoon and trade pick one and my guess is that North Melbourne are probably the team best equipped to facilitate a trade for him. If it's not North it'll probably be Hawthorne depending on who's more keen for him. Now North could get a little bit burned by the fact that the whole Jason Horn Francis thing might put them off a little bit going for Harley Reid here who is a local. It might seem more risky to them whereas Hawthorne I think would back themselves in a little bit more to go for him but the North do have you know their own uh, pick two in this scenario plus Port Adelaide's first rounder to potentially get a deal done so my audacious prediction here is that Harley Reid joins North at the end of the year and then the final premiere uh, it's a tough one I think it'll be a Collingwood Melbourne grand final I'm going to be a basic bitch and suggest that uh, having said that picking the winner on that day is going to be tough this Collingwood side, there's a lot of um, heroes in that team. Like it's a, it's a fantastic story. You get the sense that they're the sort of team in a big clash like that, 
They never say die. It's hard to imagine them losing on grand final day, but I think Melbourne are absolutely equipped to win it. So I will say Collingwood because it's harder to tip against Collingwood. And to be honest, they're the best team in the competition right now. Is a dip in form coming? Probably. It probably will happen towards the mid to late part of the season, but I think they'll still regain top spot with, you know, probably just the three losses for the year and go on to win the premiership. Anyway, guys, that was a pretty rapid mid-season ladder prediction. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Bear in mind as well, I'm recording this a couple of weeks ago as to when you're watching it as well so certain things might have happened that might influence this but I'm trying my best to spread out the content a little bit for you so that my channel doesn't completely just stop for three weeks while I travel but anyway guys I appreciate your support make sure you check out that manscaped offer um, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next video cheers